Happy Sabbath viewers. We welcome you to the current community STA Church. We are discussing our lesson. We are at lesson five. We have done lesson one to four. Uh, this, the focus in this quarter is the great controversy. And we have seen the controversy between good and evil, between the devil and the uh, God. And we have seen the instruments that we use to overcome the devil. Together with me, uh, I have my brother, Gerard. Say hi to the online viewers. Happy Sabbath, dear viewers. We welcome you in a special way to this Sabbath lesson discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Before we start, I would uh, welcome my brother to say a word of prayer. Let's believe as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you've given us as your children, even for to study your word. It's our sincere prayer, my Lord, that your Holy Spirit that guided uh, the men to write this, the same may inspire us, our thoughts today, and that we will, uh, we will be taught by your Holy Spirit open our hearts and to understanding together with the viewers also for this we pray believing and trusting in jesus name amen, amen. thank you my brother mm -hmm. uh, viewers we are looking at lesson five mm -hmm. and our lesson five is based on faith against all odds mm -hmm. i was trying to think about uh, this title faith against all odds while well, we know what is faith but the writer wants us to discuss it against our odds. Mm -hmm. And when we look at odds, for me, I, 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 I thought and I associate this with challenges and not mm -hmm. just mere challenges, but challenges that are quite intense. Mm -hmm. And we, as we move along, we are going to see mm -hmm. how great men of faith mm -hmm. had to remain faithful in spite of the challenges that they faced, which included persecutions, mm -hmm. uh, imprisonment, being butchered, and many others. Mm -hmm. Our key text comes from the book of Psalms, 119 verse 11, mm -hmm. which says, <clears throat> Your word I have hidden in my heart mm -hmm. that I might not sin against you. Mm -hmm. Now, indeed, um, the writer is talking about keeping the word of God in his heart mm -hmm. as a weapon against sinning. Mm -hmm. And as we move along, this word, we are going to find it as very instrumental mm -hmm. in keeping us on check and also sustaining our faith. Mm -hmm. As we move down, our writer has given us a very inter interesting introduction mm -hmm. where we are told of two groups of people. Mm -hmm. There's a group that lives aimlessly, mm -hmm. Without a purpose, what are you dying for mm -hmm. and what are you living for? Mm -hmm. And there's some other group which has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And this can be likened with a great controversy where we have the righteous on one side mm -hmm. and those that are standing for the devil on the other side being purposeless. Mm -hmm. Are we purp purposeless? The word himself, mm -hmm. do we live empty lives without an ultimate goal? Mm -hmm. What is our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. uh, as we move along, we realize, and even from where we have come from, mm -hmm. we have seen great men and women of faith mm -hmm. and how they put their focus on the Word of God mm -hmm. and the ultimate goal being eternal life. And they kept um, fighting and standing for God. And this period uh, that we are talking about, which also continues to up to to date mm -hmm. is the period of reformation mm -hmm. and this is a period of dark ages and mm -hmm. the, you know the, the writers are very strategic in the in the terms they use dark ages mm -hmm. in the sense that they are referring to the torment and the the, the, the struggles mm -hmm. these men and women of God went through as they they, they stood for God mm -hmm. the writer tells us that these men, women and children of the Protestant Reformation were totally different in the way they did things. Mm -hmm. What they do, they had an abiding purpose worth mm -hmm. they living for, mm -hmm. and they, what they believed in mattered. Yeah. You know, when mm -hmm. you have a purpose and, what, and when you know what you believe in, mm -hmm. you will stand for it no matter what. Mm -hmm. That is what happened to the people 
in the dark ages. Mm -hmm. And my question has been, indeed, mm -hmm. are we out of the dark ages? Do we still require this reformation? Do we, do we need to continue with the reformation process? Mm -hmm. Yes, we should, because indeed we are still waiting for uh, the ultimate destruction of the devil. And so the great controversy rages on. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in this week's study, mm -hmm. we shall see a number of life-changing teachings of scripture which mm -hmm. provide the basis for genuine purpose and true meaning in life. Mm -hmm. Why am I living? What do I live for? And mm -hmm. what informs the way I live? Mm -hmm. For us Christians, what informs the way we live mm -hmm. and the way we do things is what we are looking at ultimately. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the end of time Mm -hmm. But before the end of time, we must be involved in doing something for Christ. Christ himself set for us an example. Mm -hmm. He lived, struggled, died for us, and he seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Mm -hmm. And as we look forward to joining him on the resurrection morning, mm -hmm. we must be very purposive. We must not lead empty lives. And so, to stand this final crisis... Mm -hmm. That is now raging, and I believe we are living in the last end times, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. looking yeah. at the signs and how things are happening. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really believe that this is the time that we need to to really call upon the, the, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to really read the scripture and understand the word of God so mm -hmm. that even as we live a directed life, mm -hmm. we live from, from a point of information sure. and Last week we learned that standing for the truth, and the mm -hmm. truth is the word of God, who is mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Amen. So unless you know Jesus, indeed viewer, mm -hmm. we cannot stand for him. Mm -hmm. So my brother, as we move on, mm -hmm. do you have a comment to make? And what will you say uh, about God's word alone? Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I was just thinking through as you are introducing the lesson. And we're talking about faith against all odds. And um, of course, we can define faith yeah. uh, in the context of Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah. But again, when we come to uh, uh, the, the context of the discussion, we want to look at faith, but against all odds in this particular context. So I, I it dawned on me when I was thinking through that um, faith needs to prevail against all obstacles True. that uh, it, uh, our, our demonst the, the demonstration of our faith may not necessarily mean uh, that there are no obstacles. In, in other words, um, uh, our Christianity or our belief in Jesus Christ, we are not supposed to be Christians when it is convenient. True. So it comes a time when uh, sometimes there, there is no convenience. It's not convenient to be a Christian, but we decide to just be Christians and to remain faithful even when it's not convenient because very, when, very true. when it turns to be and we want only to be uh, to exercise our faith when it's convenient then uh, I am I'm not sure if that could be <laughs> I'm <laughs> not sure if that, if that can be called faith mm. and the lesson writer says that um I know today many people are really searching for uh, the genuine uh, people are really looking for uh, true meaning, meaning and uh, uh, true meaning of life or the purpose. Many people are trying to discover the purpose of life in itself. But uh, there are others who have discovered their purpose uh, in life. Like we read about uh, the reformers of old. And to them, to deny their purpose, what they already believed, was to deny their identity in verity. Mm -hmm. So... They had something to 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 live for, and uh, as as we look at this lesson this week, we are also going to to see uh, as Christians where can we get our purpose, and because if we don't, as the famous quote says that uh, he that does not uh, uh, have something to stand for mm -hmm. will definitely stand for anything. Yeah. So if we don't have anything, to st something to stand for, if we don't have something to believe in, then we might believe anything or stand for anything. So these people, the reformers of old, they had God's word that was their sole uh, guide. And uh, sometimes we see faith, we see them exercising faith 
which when we look at from a worldly perspective it almost looks like a foolishness they they exercise the childlike faith um, i'm reminded of a text where paul says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that do not believe mm-hmm. so these people trusted god they understood that the word of god came from god himself and it's the word which lives and abides forever Amen. so their faith was strengthened and their courage was always renewed we see that uh, uh, uh they, they they took the word of god as if it's they they are actively listening to god speaking so it wasn't mm-hmm. something uh, the word of god to them was not uh, some powerful book authored by some some monks or some uh, supernatural human beings but they took it as a, the living word of god and uh, as such the the breath of life itself and uh, mm-hmm. I, i i i found something in the sunday part i would like to read uh, this to us concerning uh, how uh, this from a quotation from ministry of healing page 122 it says that so uh, and begin that they treasured every word and as they read its pages and be, uh, pages and believed its promises their faith was strengthened and their courage renewed mm-hmm. so with all the promises of god's word in them he's speaking to us individually like they took it personal it was it wasn't like god was speaking to them corporately they took that word of god personal and uh, i i believe this is uh, the fact that it's god's word alone god's word god has said this and this is what we ought to do and so they found that took it personal and decided to live it to live out what they had learned i think that stood out for me the fact that they 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 could derive the purpose of life i don't know where today uh dear viewers we derive our purpose from maybe we look at uh, some of the celebrities and the life that they live and probably that is what many people desire to maybe uh, we we look at many other things around but these people specifically from the word of god and they saw what their potential is <laughs> and to them their life that they lived today they uh, it did not define because we realize that probably there are people who have faith we read from last week the faithful people like uh, uh John Hus who died so in fact even at the point of his death he's dying when believing so to him it means that the current life his faith is not defined by the current life because it extends to even the life after the one we are living today mm. so that i think that is uh that is one of the things that uh, tri- uh stood out for me and again now the, the experience of john wickliff yes. that uh, we, we we he he was able to translate the bible into english language so that every person could read it and understand it so you know for someone who has gone to school and who is learned and is the purpose what he wants to do in life is mm. to translate the bible for people to read yeah then you look at that and probably some uh a wildling will say then what a waste of education <laughs> but he discovered his life his purpose because he wanted he understood what the gospel was and he wanted at least everybody to to understand i don't know if uh, there's something else on the sunday part i'm leaving yeah thank you thank you my brother gerard mm-hmm. um something that really uh, caught my attention that these reformers read the bible until mm. their their minds were saturated, saturated. Mm. which means that they really took time mm-hmm. you know when you are saturated it means that you are filled to capacity mm-hmm. how much are we doing in reading this word of god mm. and for them to read until saturation it means they delighted in the word they mm. found satisfaction in the word mm-hmm. they, 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 there's nothing that they could put Mm-hmm. Uh, ahead of this word the word always came mm-hmm. ahead of everything else mm-hmm. how much are we doing do mm-hmm. we find satisfaction mm-hmm. in fact sometimes we we read some scripture and like prophecy probably there was uh, i don't know if there's someone who, who who sometimes finds difficulties uh, especially in reading prophecy mm-hmm. and you are like <laughs> oh you put it down but you see mm-hmm. it reminds you of me of the world dances god did not reveal to them everything at one go mm-hmm. we don't have mm-hmm. to understand everything at a go, at a go. Mm-hmm. but consistently and with uh, you know humility and seeking the power of the whole spirit mm-hmm. then we will be able to understand mm-hmm. and just not just that they read the word to circulation mm-hmm. but they 
lived by the word and they mm-hmm. passed on the word mm-hmm. to people around them mm-hmm. and that's why today we have the word we are able mm-hmm. to even to know what John Wycliffe mm-hmm. did and many others mm-hmm. who came mm-hmm. after them what are we doing as christians after reading mm-hmm. do we have time to live by the word and even share mm-hmm. with our neighbors with our mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. we have a role to play now on uh, passing on my brother before probably you will make a comment mm-hmm. um the writer wants us to also look at passing on this word mm-hmm. we have read it mm-hmm. we read we listen to the word mm-hmm. we 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 somebody some people preach to us we have mm-hmm. come meetings we are many forum mm-hmm. where we get the word of god mm-hmm. but how we handle this word mm-hmm. i could probably take a text from the book of second corinthians uh chapter 4 verse 1 to 6 what does it tell us about uh this word okay second corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 to 6 verse 1 to 6 it says therefore since we have this ministry as we have received mercy we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, mm-hmm. but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Mm-hmm. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6 says, For it is the God uh, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my brother. Many mm-hmm. things are coming out. Mm-hmm. You can see Paul mm-hmm. is talking about from uh, about the word of God because he has understood it. Mm-hmm. And he's saying mm-hmm. that uh, since we have this ministry, which mm-hmm. ministry do they have? The ministry of spreading the word of mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. And as he goes on to say mm-hmm. that they, they are empowered by this word to an extent that they live by the same. Mm-hmm. They, they are not walking, walking in craftiness, mm-hmm. nor handling the word of God deceitfully. deceitfully. Mm-hmm. That they are living by the word and they are guided by the word. Mm-hmm. And it is only the word of God mm-hmm. that directs and guides their, their thinking, their, their character, and, and so on. Mm-hmm. And they are talking about that this word, those who do not know, they have chosen to, to be foolish. It mm-hmm. is only uh, veil to those who are, who are foolish and if you go on and on you mm-hmm. realize that uh, in verse 6 he says for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness mm-hmm. and this commanding of light to shine, shine out of darkness is mm-hmm. through his word mm-hmm. the word that he has given us by understanding the word then we'll know who God is mm-hmm. we'll know what he expects us to do mm-hmm. and then when the word shines in our hearts Mm-hmm. It reflects through mm-hmm. our character, the way we speak and the way we do things. And that mm-hmm. is how uh, Paul, uh, the apostle, is talking mm-hmm. about uh, what happened during his time. Mm-hmm. But note that Paul lived at a time that there were no uh, no, no, no temptations, no persecutions. Mm-hmm. These persecutions were there. Mm-hmm. He faced a number of, 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 of challenges. Mm-hmm. Paul himself, was a persecu- he, was, was, him, him was a persecutor. Mm. And when he's being persecuted, probably he understood what it meant. Mm-hmm. Christ lived and died and went to heaven. And we believe he understands what we go through. Mm-hmm. Paul went through these problems. Mm-hmm. But we are reminded that he remained faithful. Mm-hmm. And this faithfulness is what we are being challenged about. Mm-hmm. How much? Do we understand of this word? As somebody challenged me sometimes back mm. uh, about the number of Bibles that we have. If mm-hmm. you look about uh, at the number of Bibles that we have, there mm-hmm. are very many in different versions. Mm, true. We have the King James Version. We have many other versions mm-hmm. that are there. Yeah. Others have been 
you know, totally diluted in the sense that some portions of scripture, if we had time, viewers, we could go through a number of uh, versions and we will see that some uh, may appear original and others appear like they're omitted. Yeah, omitted and revised and mm -hmm. so. So even as we pass on mm -hmm. the word of God to our children, to the community around us, to mm -hmm. our friends, mm -hmm. Do we know what it entails? Do we know the right word? Do mm -hmm. we have the right versions of the, of, of the Bible? Mm -hmm. We are told of one man mm -hmm. who is called William T T Tyndall. Tyndall, yeah. Tyndall. Mm -hmm. he, has, he had a great desire mm -hmm. to make the word of God clear. Mm -hmm. And he endeavored even to translate the Bible mm -hmm. into a language that people would understand and even to correct the mistakes that may have been made earlier by the earlier reformers mm -hmm. and earlier translators. Yeah. And even as he was doing that, he faces a number of obstacles. And one mm -hmm. of them is that the, the popular church then mm -hmm. tried to confiscate the Bibles that uh, John Tyndale was uh, translating and burning them, yeah. and uh, he he is also subject to a number of uh, of uh, what can I say of of, of persecutions, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read a statement here mm -hmm. that the reformers, like William Tyndale, mm -hmm. his greatest desire was to give England an accurate, readable translation of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Which word do we give to those that are around us? If you have children, you have younger siblings, mm -hmm. you have uh, people in the office, mm -hmm. do we give them the correct? He determined to translate the Bible from the original languages and mm -hmm. the correct some of the errors in Wycliffe's translation, which had happened 140 years before him. Mm -hmm. Eventu eventually, we are told that he was also arrested and tried, mm -hmm. but his story did not end very well uh, in the eyes of human beings mm -hmm. because uh, of the way he's killed. Yeah. But w what is important is what will happen on the resurrection morning. We are told that within um, that in Germany, mm -hmm. he was arrested, mm -hmm. he was uh, taken to um, Belgium Belgium, mm -hmm. and uh, he's, 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 he's exposed to always banned. Can I, can I say, can I say in that? In fact, they say that his execution has strangled him to death. They strangled him and uh, put then, him ablaze. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. sure. Why would someone try to strangle you and they're burning you? Either of them <laughs> will kill you. But you, you see, they wanted to make it as painful as possible. As possible. Mm. But the legacy he leaves behind, mm -hmm. the efforts he made in translating the Bible were not in vain. Mm -hmm. But as he was dying, he said very interesting words mm -hmm. before he dies. Eh? Mm -hmm. He says, um, there's a statement open where... Open the king of England's yes, eyes. Yes, yes. He says, Lord, mm -hmm. open the king of England's eyes. Mm -hmm. And what we are told that God miraculously answered his prayer. Amen. Within four years of his death, mm -hmm. four English translations of the Bible were published. Mm -hmm. And if you move on, we are told that the King James Version today, which is very popular, yeah, and yeah. Um, even me, I seem to like King James King Version. James. I think mm -hmm. it's the most original yeah, yeah. version that we can, we can talk about. Mm -hmm. We are told that 76% of mm -hmm. the Old Testament mm -hmm. is borrowed from his, his work. work yeah. And 83% of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. New Testament mm -hmm. comes from his work. Mm -hmm. So, what we see is that Unless we have the correct word of God mm -hmm. and we understand it in the correct way like Tyndall, we will make errors mm -hmm. in passing the same to those that are around us. Mm -hmm. So what the writer is telling us is that no matter how difficult it seemed or how challenging the circumstances were for him mm -hmm. and his Bible-believing colleagues trusted that God was working out everything according to his will. Mm -hmm. Tyndale's life made a difference for eternity. Can we mm -hmm. make a difference uh, among eternity. us, those we mm -hmm. 
live with. Mm -hmm. And not just a mere difference for today, but for eternity. Mm -hmm. The lives that we live, the things that we do, can we be able to make a difference for eternity for those that we are able to, to interact with? Mm -hmm. What are we passing on? Unless we read this word and read it well mm -hmm. and have delight in reading this word, mm -hmm. we will not have uh, the correct understanding of the same mm -hmm. and therefore will not have uh, the, 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 the influence mm -hmm. that is being talked about here, influence of leading those that are around us towards eternal, eternal life. Mm -hmm. My brother, you may make a comment on yeah. uh, what uh, I have said, and then uh, say something about enlightened by the Spirit. Thank you so much. So for, um, I, I see another man here who discovered his, uh, the purpose for his life. And as such, he's not just living for anything. But mm -hmm. uh, we, we are talking about f faith against all odds. Yes, yeah. This man had an opportunity to uh, probably drop the allegations that he was working on any, any translation of the Bible for, this, for the sake of his own life. But you see, even at the point of his death, there's something that happens here that people are strangling him to death before being burned. But his final words that Lord, he is making a prayer, in fact, mm. that opened the eyes of the king of, of England. England. So for I think for somebody to reach this point, you you must really you must have really lived the word that you have mm, and understood because yeah. uh, we, we see the same with christ christ at the point of his death then he's praying for the people who are murdering him now we we live among a, a generation or like our daily lives there it's characterized by sorrow by discouragement by sometimes darkness sometimes even confusion and ignorance. But to this man, I see they took the word of God, the scriptures will shine joy uh, upon their souls and hope will come on their discouragement. Mm. Light will shine upon their darkness. They, they will get direction amidst their confusion. And even amidst perplexity, they will get certainty. And when they are weak, they will get stronger. And when they are probably in their ignorance, the word of God will make them even much more wise mm. so i see here even at the point of his death his faith prevailed and later on even after his death his the life that he had lived i don't know if it ended prematurely <laughs> because he was killed or that was the fullness of his life yeah. but in we, we see it made a difference for eternity because we enjoy the works that he did anyway True. now there, there's a text in revelation that says um blessed are they who die or who sleep in the Lord from today onwards? So True. in as much as uh, we we see his life ending in this particular manner, but this Jesus Christ describes just as, um, as sleep. And closely tied to uh, what this man did is another man called um, Martin Luther who came to a turning point in his own life. Mm -hmm. There's a time he was in a, he was in school and he discovered a Latin copy of the Bible. And uh, he, he had never seen such a book before. And as such, he had never read the Bible, so he had no idea. So when, with sheer delight, he decided to just read it chapter mm -hmm. after, after chapter, chapter word, for word. word for word, verse after verse. And uh, he, he he really he, he was really excited when about uh, concerning about uh, what he he read, because as he was reading, the Holy Spirit would reveal to him uh, uh, the the precious truths of the Word of God, mm -hmm. and it dawned on him how how how, how different what uh, the Roman Church then was teaching against what the Bible was. Mm -hmm. uh, was advocating for. Now, he made a very interesting statement when somebody asked him. Uh, he he had sensed the guidance of the Holy Spirit as the truths that had been obscured by tradition seemed to leaf up the pages of the Holy Writ. Now, he described this experience that, uh, about uh, his experience with the Word of God the mm -hmm. first time he was reading. He said that, Oh, that God will give me such a book for myself. Amen. I don't know if, uh, you know, today many people find the Bible one of the most boring books to mm -hmm. read. 
and uh, I, I don't know I don't know if they, I know this is as part of the great controversy probably not probably it's the it's, it's the the old uh, the old serpent the devil who is crafting ways to make it even more more boring, more boring yeah. so we can i remember last week you we were talking about how we can find time for everything except for the word of god so this man says oh how that i will get this book uh, such a book for myself now we have it we are privileged as we have it i don't we know i don't know what we say <laughs> We have it even in soft. Even in soft, we can carry it everywhere. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As opposed to, I don't know if sometimes uh, it's tribulation or trouble that makes sometimes spices some of these things up. Because even the Waldenses, they will cram, we read, they will cram very huge portions, huge portions of scripture. Uh-huh. Because they knew what it meant. That is what defined their identity and their destiny. But today we really have the entire Bible everyone in their own language i doubt if probably there's somebody will say i can't access it because it's not there in my language hardly any hardly any now there there are some there there are some there there like this particular man luther what stood out for him because probably he would have also uh, followed what the other people are doing to leave the probably uh the, the priests or the prelates or the popes to translate it for him but as he took it individually then he read it then prayerfully the holy spirit also revealed to him uh the precious truths of um of the, that are here word, yeah. so now there's one mistake that i many people there's writer try to say that many of us do today that we want to understand uh the the word of god without the assistance of the spirit of god mm. Now that is where many people now end up with a different understanding of the scripture because the holy spirit cannot uh, cannot reveal different things of him himself he can't reveal different things to the same to different people yeah. okay. so if the same holy spirit guided these men to write inspired the men to write these words then he again can help interpret and we surely will arrive at the same interpretation mm. now today uh, the the devil has made the word of god look like uh, uh, he he actually endeavor to endeavors to strip this book of uh, the supernatural character the holy spirit to, to just make it look like a uh, some really good literature yeah? mm. it, it's it's more uh, even worse an oppressive tool of uh, of religion for controlling the masses i've even had uh people could and say religion is uh the opium of, of the masses the mm. so so to mean that probably some someone who believes or who reads the scripture and believes in what uh, is there is probably on uh, some uh, religious drug <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> in some sort of religious drug so uh, that is how how much uh, the devil has done to 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 make people believe Uh, or rather to 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 strip the bible of uh, of the uh the, the supernatural character the holy spirit now there is a there's a man here called john knox and uh we remember he 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 he's one of the uh a, he was a scottish reformer mm-hmm. and uh, at, at the point of, at some point there's a conversation that has been recorded of him and mary the queen of scots So Mary said that he in asking John Knox that you interpret the Bible in one way and the Roman Catholic teachers also interpret it in another way so he, she was asking who should I believe who is so and who is the judge <laughs> now I was interested uh, the, the John Knox the reformer gave her a very interesting response he said that you shall believe God that plainly speaks in his word believe in god who plainly who plainly speaks in his word mm-hmm. and even father goes ahead to say that uh, and father than the word teaches you you neither shall believe the one nor the other the word of god is plain in itself mm-hmm. and if there appear any obscurity in one place then the holy ghost which is never contrary to himself explains the same more clearly in other places so that there Amen. can remain no doubt but unto such an obstinately remain 
uh, as, uh, but uh, but unto such as obs- obstinately remain ignorant, as the Bible says that probably what hasn't been in revealed, it's not, it's not for us. Mm. But God has revealed every other thing. So I loved I loved this response that uh, we have the ability. You know, God gifted us the the uh, the freedom to he gave us the mind to think, to think so that we can think for ourselves and in the process of thinking when we do so prayerfully after reading the word of god or as we read the holy spirit is able to guide us through and to understand what is actually meant mm-hmm. and i actually realized i was reading a quotation some time back that uh, the word of god is it, it's a very it's a very special book in that it doesn't require someone to go to school necessarily to come and understand what the word says mm. because so long as you find it in a language you can understand then as you read it prayerfully then the holy spirit can reveal it to a child a very young child in a in a similar manner Amen. he reveals Amen. it to an old man alike so i found that interesting that the holy spirit enlightens our understanding of the word and that also increases because unless we understand it we we will only be christians when it's convenient because if i understand that i can have faith in god but still suffer if the holy spirit i read the bible and it says that probably in this life you may still believe in god probably there are floods today and your property may still be swept away mm. but you can still trust in god because our our destiny is not our end is not in this life but in the world to come, come. so our the holy spirit uh, what i got the main thing in this particular day is we need to ask for the help of the holy spirit to help us or understand when we read he will help us understand Amen. the scriptures i don't know if there is something i left before you take us on christ alone and grace alone yeah thank you thank you my brother um when i was looking at the story of uh, luther mm-hmm. i came a section where i came across a section where he says mm-hmm. that initially as he read the word of god and mm-hmm. uh, he wanted to know more he, it it became like a mirror for him mm-hmm. and he was able to see how wrongly he did things before understanding mm-hmm. the word of god everything that he had done mm-hmm. in in the wrong way was mm-hmm. now very clear before his own hands and it depressed him mm-hmm. but um we are told that uh, later it is revealed to him mm-hmm. through a close associate that mm-hmm. uh, you do not look at yourself when mm-hmm. you have understood and known Jesus Amen. look away from yourself mm-hmm. towards Jesus mm-hmm. and then that grace of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. is able to cover you mm-hmm. otherwise before Jesus we we are very sinful and that's mm-hmm. why Jesus died in our place mm-hmm. So once we find the word of God once mm-hmm. we are enlightened by the spirit mm-hmm. therefore we do not have to focus on the past and say okay I stole in the past mm-hmm. okay I never lived very mm-hmm. very religiously and very very rightly the way the word of God wanted me mm-hmm. and you start now lamenting over the past mm-hmm. in fact that is a turning point we just need to look at the face mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ who will at least welcome us because indeed that we know he's mm-hmm. a loving god mm-hmm. and uh, the moment we find him mm-hmm. he accepts us the way we are there's a there's a quote uh, that says someone said that um i don't know if i read it from ellen white's writing so but it says that uh, when we look at ourselves we cannot see how we can be saved yeah, true. but when we look at christ amen. we cannot see how we can be lost amen Mm. So then now we move on we are looking at Christ alone mm-hmm. and grace alone. Mm-hmm. Now in this journey towards heaven what efforts are we supposed to make? Mm-hmm. How much are we supposed to do so that then we can be we can be saved. We can be saved. <laughs> what role do we play? It's interesting. It's very interesting mm-hmm. but just uh, uh, I just want to read some some scripture from Ephesians Two, verse eight and nine, mm-hmm. and uh, let's see what the, the writer is telling us. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight says, mm-hmm. "For by grace you have been saved mm-hmm. through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is a gift of God. Mm-hmm. We are saved not because of how much we have done, mm-hmm. but we are saved by grace. Mm-hmm. Salvation is a gift. It's a gift. 
And this gift, the good thing about the gift is that viewers, the gift is given to everybody mm -hmm. who, who wants the gift. Mm -hmm. You have to be available for the gift. Mm -hmm. And this gift, you don't have to do so much. Mm -hmm. It is by grace. Mm -hmm. That's I, I found that very profound. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 says, note of works, lest anyone should boast. Mm -hmm. uh, boast, uh, verse 10 says, For mm -hmm. we, okay, verse 10, we don't have to read it. But mm -hmm. the writer is telling us that we don't have to worry about how we shall get saved. Mm -hmm. Salvation is a gift to all of us. Mm -hmm. It's open to all of us. Mm -hmm. But then we have a role to accept this gift. If I buy for you a gift and you don't take it, will it be yours? No. No, it can't be yours. It can't be. So we need to accept this gift mm -hmm. because There's no sacrifice. There's no work. There's no effort that we put. In fact, if you read Romans, mm -hmm. Romans uh, 323, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. It says, it says, for all have sinned mm -hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We have all sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God. And so, therefore, mm -hmm. what... Uh, What magic are we going to play so that we get this salvation? Mm -hmm. Christ, because the wages of sin is death. Elsewhere it tells us, actually, um, Romans 6.23 tells us that for the wages of sin is death, death mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal, eternal life, life in, in Christ Jesus, Jesus who Lord. is our Lord. Our Lord. Mm -hmm. So if we have all fallen, and short, uh, fallen short of the glory of God mm -hmm. and the wages of sin is death, So rightfully we are supposed to die, but someone, our creator, died on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So that the death we would have died, he died. He died. The, 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 life the life we would have lived, we live. We live. Mm -hmm. So really we, we do not have to waste a moment mm -hmm. thinking about it because this is already provided. Mm -hmm. The writer tells us that... Uh, God has provided salvation, salvation as a gift. Mm -hmm. His Holy Spirit mm -hmm. leads us to accept mm -hmm. by faith what Christ has freely provided through his death on Calvary. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus, the divine Son of God, offered his divine life or perfect life to atone for mm -hmm. our sins. Mm -hmm. Amen. I find mm -hmm. that very, very profound and very central mm -hmm. to all of us. Indeed, on our own, mm -hmm we will not make it. But because it has been given to us, and therefore now another mm -hmm. question comes, so do we really have a role to play? Mm -hmm. If salvation is a gift, and by grace we are saved, mm -hmm. do we have a role to play? Mm -hmm. When we accept Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts, that power of the Holy Spirit will work in our hearts in such a way that we would uh, automatically uh, do that which God uh, uh, wants us to do. Mm -hmm. We have a role to play, but not by our own mighty. It's the work of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that's going to direct our steps mm -hmm. so that therefore we are able to live according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. We are told about Martin Luther and other reformers who discovered Christ alone as their source of salvation. Mm -hmm. And they started preaching the word of God. Now, when we discover that Christ is the source of our salvation and he has died for us, mm -hmm. do we keep that to ourselves so that therefore we get saved alone? Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about Martin Luther? Why are we talking about John Knox? Why are we talking about John Wycliffe? Mm -hmm. Because these people did something. Mm -hmm. They found salvation and they shared it mm -hmm. with others. They touched and changed the lives of others. Mm -hmm. How? can I myself, how mm. can you, my brother and the viewers, how mm. can we together work for the salvation of others? Christ is calling on all of us. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is to touch the lives of others through the way we do things, through the way we speak, through acts of charity. You know, mm -hmm. suppose you came to my house and found that my house is flooded. I don't have food. And God forbid, uh, th th those are the times we are living in. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, extend the salvation we have to these people that are really in this circumstance? Mm -hmm. Do we just pray for them and say, okay, 
Jesus loves you and God will provide. God will provide. In this circumstance, how then do we show that Christ is died for us mm -hmm. and it is Christ alone who saves? Mm -hmm. Are we therefore sending these people to Christ mm -hmm. to 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 get that support or as messengers of Christ we have a role to play on mm -hmm. behalf of Jesus Christ on earth? Mm -hmm. What can you say my brother on on that argument i'm reminded on uh, there's a text in it should be acts chapter 1 verse 8 when jesus christ promised his disciples as he was ascending he told them that uh, but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you mm -hmm. and you shall be witnesses unto me beginning from jerusalem to judea to samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. And I also see a similar uh, scenario with many people who met Jesus Christ in in person, who people who benefited directly from the goodness of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. None of them kept quiet. True. In fact, some of them were tamed, but they could not even keep, they could not, mm -hmm. they, uh, they, I could, if I could use that, they were untamable. <laughs> they couldn't be stopped uh, from witnessing for saying what jesus christ had done to them mm -hmm. now i don't think um okay probably the, the the fact that they were saying so they were not doing so maybe to minister but because there's just some push within them that they can't keep quiet mm -hmm. and the moment they voice out what god has done to them then that is another opportune time that other people who probably are going through the same would get to know of this particular jesus christ Amen who is doing a good thing and wonderful things to to those who believe in him. And as you mentioned, uh, when you're speaking about, uh, uh, previously you spoke about um, witnessing, how that we have now read, probably we have been taught the word of God, and we now have it. Mm. And apart from, does it stop at reading or hearing, or do we go ahead and leave it out, leaving what the truths we have? And does it, and from a, I think we will be too selfish to say, I just read or I listen, I'm taught, then I just leave and that's fine. Because many people in the Bible who were probably called missionaries, called by God, when they learned of these wonderful messages, then they lived it out in their own lives. Mm -hmm. Then they were able to share both by word of mouth Amen. and the testimony of the life that they were living. And uh, another thing you also spoke about uh, this uh, salvation as a gift. You know, I and then there's a question that was asked: now, wh What is the role of our works? You know, sometimes it's very painful to think, as a deacon, you have been uh, probably cleaning chairs and seats, carrying them, uh, doing all that work. But then you told, doing that cannot save you. But again, you know, it's true because it dawns on me, it's true that uh, probably if there's another way, if there's a way we would work out our salvation, mm. probably carry chairs and tents for uh, religious gatherings, then probably Jesus had no reason to die. Mm. God would have just provided more tents and chairs <laughs> <laughs> so that people would carry to be saved. Yeah. But the fact that this has been called as a, a gift now, what I see here is, uh, you know, when you gift me, I can either accept the gift or reject it. True. So when this man uh, was reading uh, the, this reformer, he was really amazed at how God really was inclined towards saving all humanity. Mm -hmm. Such that God did everything, including allowing Jesus Christ to die. So that man would now make the choice. So everything has been done. Probably my mom at home would say, uh, somebody bought food, prepared it, then chewed it, and then gives you now swallow. swallow. You, have, you, have, <laughs> you have just the final thing to do, which is just to accept. I'm, I was reminded of a text in uh, in Romans chapter 4, verse uh, from verse 1. It says that, what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, then he has something to boast about. Mm -hmm. And he will say, no, I did it. I, yeah. 
I did it. But it says now he has something to boast about then, but not before God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is interesting. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it's just that you believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ and then ah you righteous mm-hmm. then verse four. now to him who works the wages are not counted as grace but as debt because if i can work my way then it's the the wages is not of it's not it's not grace but you owe me something god you owe me i have worked now i'm waiting for you to pay me mm-hmm. but now here is something interesting now where do we draw the line between faith and work somebody said that uh, our works will not save us but again uh, living or stopping to do uh, the absence of those particular works will also not save us True. so if works can't save us but the absence again or stop you quitting doing them will also not save us then what are we uh, struggling with here then the lesson writer brought this out clearly that obedience comes as a fruit of faith Amen. so the faith that is in us is 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 a uh, is given a uh, probably will we'll give it a a feminine characteristic that it gives birth so the the one of the things that this faith gives gives birth to is obedience mm-hmm. that the fact that i have faith in jesus christ the fact that i have not just faith but an unwavering faith which by the way can stand against all odds mm-hmm. then one of the fruits that will come out is obedience and as we obey how do we know that we are obedient it's in through our works so if i am if if i no longer if i can as you are mentioning if i can have sympathy for some a brother or sister who doesn't have a meal or something and i decide to share the last of the coins i have with this particular person then i am actually obeying the law of god god says love we should love one another and now my love is or rather my love for my neighbor is not coming because i want to be saved but because i am already saved i'm a friend of jesus christ and he mm. has taught me how to love another person and now uh, it is this god's grace that it's god's grace that changes us in uh, that should be titus chapter 2 verse 11 it's one of my favorite texts it says that uh, for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men mm-hmm. and then teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live righteously and soberly in this present world so we see that even by the uh, even the, the 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 grace of god brings salvation and this particular grace that brings salvation has appeared to everybody all men there's nobody who says i haven't seen this grace mm-hmm. and then it says this particular grace it's the one that changes us We look at the experience of John Wesley. There's a time he was uh, he 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 had Luther's introduction to the book of Romans and for the first time in his life he began to understand the gospel and he appreciated it how Luther was uh, mm-hmm. so something stirred him within and he felt strangely drawn to this Christ mm-hmm. that was being preached and he gave his life for him. In fact, he says that uh, I felt I did trust in Christ and Christ alone for salvation and an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins even mine and saved me from the law of sin and death so he took it personal that hey this is Jesus Christ that this man is preaching about mm-hmm. has taken away my sins me my sins mm-hmm. and has given me a new life so he could he, he really wanted and he decided to uh to trust uh, about um, that particular Christ and one thing that happens here that we also see repeating is that when this happens we learn not to as you said previously we learn not to look at ourselves because mm-hmm. we look at ourselves and you see a sinner who can't be saved but you look at Christ then you see a savior with who nobody can be lost because he has done every, everything for us so no. the only uh, secret that is here in that we we believe in Christ and we have faith in him so this faith will work in us to obey and that obedience will come as a fruit of uh, the faith that we have and after that we stop looking now at ourselves and our sins and how big the the devil magnifies them mm-hmm. and look at Christ and how great a savior he is that no chapter of our lives can be too dark for him to 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 understand or no sin can be too big for him uh, to forgive because he already died so yeah. we just have to accept 
the uh, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ and then that that will be is so i found this interesting that salvation is a gift accept this gift god has given us a gift you know mm-hmm. we it's very difficult for people who are in need to reject a gift but unless we have that feeling of uh, the laudation church i have everything you can't give to me something that i have so, yeah. you know, that is uh, some sense of pride which which in itself is why people don't accept uh, the gift of uh, of this salvation but once we see our need and then we see that there is somebody who has actually come with a gift mm-hmm. you know if i lack a roof over my head then somebody gifts you iron sheets and gives you a carpenter and everything it's very difficult for me to re- reject this particular gift so mm-hmm. once we see our need for christ accept the gift of salvation have faith in him and obedience will spring up as a fruit of this particular faith we stop looking at ourselves look at how big christ a savior is unto us then i think our faith will thrive against all odds Amen. Amen. Thank you my brother. Amen. We have really looked at a very interesting discussion today. Mm-hmm. We have looked at faith against all odds. Mm-hmm. That indeed in our journey of faith mm-hmm. there will be many odds. Sure. But these odds are not supposed to uh, make us fall but mm-hmm. even refine us because the more we understand the word of God the more we ignore the obstacles and keep working for Christ mm. and it is very interesting the way you have put it that it is not our own works it's just a fruit just mm. like you plant a tree mm-hmm. and uh, out of the tree you see fruits it bears fruits it bears fruits mm-hmm. so indeed we have to bear fruits and uh, and the, 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 the fruits can be born out of us mm-hmm. if the spirit the whole spirit of god is in our hearts mm-hmm. just to, to to soften us and also to propel us it's not a struggle now mm-hmm. that fruit of obedience is not a struggle it's mm-hmm. just an outcome it's a result it's a result and it mm-hmm. is the power of the whole spirit not our own works mm-hmm. we, on our own we may struggle to obey and it may be very 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 difficult mm-hmm. indeed uh, therefore viewers we are saying that the the journey um towards heaven uh, involves a lot of things we are in a great controversy mm-hmm. and for us to understand the right side and the wrong side so that we can live by what is right mm-hmm. we need to understand the word of god mm-hmm. we need to know who jesus is mm-hmm. that is the word of god and what he stands for and after knowing it we are supposed to pass it on to those around us live by the word pass it on to others mm-hmm. and uh, as we do so together we will join hands and walk towards heaven Amen. let us pray with us our heavenly father we want to give you glory thank you for teaching us the word of god and teaching us that indeed it's possible to stand strong for you mm-hmm. against all odds mm-hmm. and actually sensitizing us that indeed in this journey towards heaven there are many obstacles those who have lived before us and including Jesus Christ who is our example and savior have fought the same uh, war and they have won and the fact that Christ triumphs we are also going to triumph we pray that lord you may continue to work with us abide in our hearts Tabernacle with us, that Lord, even as we walk in this journey, we shall continue to look at the throne of grace for for guidance. It is possible in you. We surrender everything to you, that Lord, you may continue to lead us. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, viewers. We welcome you again next Sabbath to discuss Lesson Mm 6. Let us uh, all get uh, informed that indeed the journey of... um, Uh, faith involves a lot Mm -hmm. but uh, we have learned that uh, if we trust in God Mm -hmm. and we surrender everything to him Mm -hmm. we shall be victorious Mm -hmm. together let us trust in God and in the resurrection morning we shall be able to see Jesus and together we shall welcome him we shall go home together to rest may God bless you Mm -hmm. bye bye Bye. Amen Mm -hmm.